Hello, good evening everybody, and welcome to another edition of TCBRadioNetwork.com on Facebook Live. I'm Krista Joy, and Elvis tribute artist and cover model Peter Alden is on assignment tonight. We are celebrating the life and memory of Elvis Presley with a mission to share his legacy with the world. It is Tuesday, February 27th, 2018, and tonight we have news on Elvis Presley running for Congress in Arkansas. How about that? This day in Elvis history and 10 interesting facts about Elvis. I've also got a ton of great video for you guys, so I hope you'll stay till the very, very end. Uh, but first, we're going to kick it off with our intro and some Peter Alden music for you in the background. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. time that any better. That was awesome. <laughs> hello. Hey, Terry Lee. I see you. Hi, Joni Suarez. Hello. Brenda Grimes is here. Amanda Brown. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm so tired. I had to rally. It's been a rough week, and I'm so glad that you're here with me. It makes me feel like it's all worth it, so thank you so much for watching tonight. All right. I want to start it off tonight by saying a special, special thank you to all of you. I just realized somewhere last week or in the last few days, we hit two, over 2,000 likes over on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TCB radio. I think at this moment we are at 2,080 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have never in the history of Facebook had a Facebook page explode in the way that this one has. And it's all a testament to Elvis. People around the world are finding us because they love Elvis. And uh, they love getting their Elvis news. So thank you, thank you, and thank you for sharing the video. That brings me to sharing. If you have a moment... I have no one here with me tonight. Usually I have somebody hitting the share button um, behind the scenes. I'm counting on you guys tonight. If you can hit the share button, let everybody know that you're watching your Elvis news tonight on TCB Radio. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. So what we're going to do is um, first talk about what I mentioned in the headliners there. There's a man named Elvis Presley hoping to get to Congress. So um, the story goes that um, <laughs> this gentleman, obviously he's not our Elvis, but uh, he's actually um, in Star City, Arkansas, and he has changed his name legally to Elvis D. Presley. It says Presley will represent the Libertarian Party to run against Representative Rick Crawford of Arkansas in this year's election to represent the first congressional district in eastern Arkansas. And this is according to the Associated Press. And as this Facebook video appears to show, the um, the automatic refinished technician also happens to do an impression of the king of rock and roll. So the link that I got this news from has a video of this guy. He's an ETA. It's very obvious. And um, so what happened was, this guy legally changed his name to that of the legendary singer-songwriter, and it is said that his former name is not even known. 
He is now obviously an aspiring lawmaker who has previously run for other political positions in the state but did not immediately respond to Huffington Post's request for comment. So a guy that's changed his name to Elvis Presley is running for Congress in Arkansas. There's Elvis news being made every day, every single day, you guys. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Tina. Thank you for checking on me. Hey, Barbara. Um, Gizmo is here with me. He's going to make his final appearance towards the end of the show. So uh, we'll I'll show you guys Gizmo. He's hanging in there. All right. So let's see what else. Today, February 27th, on this day in Elvis history, let's go through that. So February 27th, 1957, the shooting for Loving You moved to the Jessup Ranch north of Hollywood. And on February 27th, 1963, Elvis overdubbed vocals in Spanish for the song Guadalajara at Radio Recorders. He also had two dental crowns applied. And for two crowns back in 1963, $170. Now you're going to pay about 1000 for each crown. So, uh, But Elvis got his done for just $170 for two of them back in 1963. Um, on February 27, 1970, Elvis held a noon press conference at the Astro World Hotel and talked about his musical roots, the current music scene, and how his son records sounded funny to him now. Uh, Elvis performed at the annual Texas Livestock Show Houston Astrodome at 2 o'clock and 7.45 p.m. He made a dramatic entrance in an open Jeep but he was discouraged both during and after the first show because of the poor acoustics and what he judged to be an indifferent response from a less than capacity crowd. He said, I guess I just can't bring it in like I used to between shows. But then his spirits were lifted at the evening show by the great response from a crowd of 36,299. And according to the Los Angeles Times, his performance was masterful. I love that. So I, I got a little bit of video um, of this press conference that I want to show you guys. There's a great full video on YouTube. Just type in Elvis Houston Astrodome 1970. Um, at about the two and a half minute mark, he mentions Walt Disney. And if you know me, you know that I'm a huge Disney fan. And when my Elvis and Disney World collide, I get so excited. Um, so I was watching this video and just all of a sudden he mentioned Walt Disney. So I'm going to play this for you. Um, not the whole thing. It's a nine minute video, but I'll take you up to the part where he talks about Walt Disney, uh, where he's just joking around, but you'll see what I mean. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play that, and um, y'all can talk to me. I'll be able to read your comments, um, and also uh, I'll respond to you after the show, like always. So let me go ahead and get this going for you. See, so Oh, and watch, you guys. This you got to watch this on your own computer because they zoom in on his face so close. You can see the pores in his skin, and his, it's just Amazing, amazing. The other videos of him actually performing in the Astrodome are awful, terrible. You can't see, you can't hear, so I'm not even going to play you guys those. You can look those up on your own time. But this press conference, he looks amazing. So let me go ahead and uh, get that started for you. We'll, play, we'll watch it for about three minutes, and then I've got a bunch more cool Elvis news for you right after that. So stand by. Hi, Jerry Cornell. I don't know if you heard me, but Elvis is going to mention Disney on this video. So stay tuned for that. Let me go ahead and get it started for you. Here we go. It's nice though, I like it, boy. <laughs> Fred Las Vegas. What, uh, what made you decide to come to Texas? Oh, uh, well, <coughs> you know, to tell you the truth, I started out here in Texas. I, I think the, 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 uh, the first shows that I worked was down here, man, around Houston. Remember what location you worked here in Texas? Well, I worked, uh, I worked Houston, I worked uh, Corpus Christi, I, every little town here, Longview, man, you, you name it, I've been there. You know, really, I've been all over Texas. What do you think of Texas? <laughs> I like it, I like it. Elvis, can you really give enjoy us, uh, uh, I understand with all the big uh, engagements like Las Vegas, etc., the reason why you selected the livestock show and rodeo well, uh, the, uh, 
they asked me to do it, and I was anxious to do some live appearances. You know, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've been on stage in front of anybody live. And uh, I was anxious to do some live appearances, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get in front of the people. Have you ever seen the inside of the dome before? Never have. It scares them. <laughs> it's a big place, man, you know. You've been known in the past as the king of rock and roll. Can you guys you hear? I can't get it any style. louder. I hope you can hear. You're king, or do you consider that still your style? Uh, well, I think the overall thing has improved. Uh, the overall sound's improved, I mean. But I think it, uh, it's, it's according to the songs, you know, it's just according to the songs. Did your stage pre uh, presentation still the same way it was, or have you improved on that? Uh, well, I just do whatever I feel on There's stage. There's a close-up for you. I always did that. Are you going to keep making films? I hope to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'd like to make better films than the kind of made before. Well, better than the ones I made before. <coughs> Excuse me, I can't take this fresh air, man. I'm used to the back, the garbage can at the uh, International Hotel, man. <laughs> if I can't smell some garbage, I don't feel at home, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> Do you have any films in right now or any plans? No, there's nothing in, as far as I know of, is it, Colonel? Anything in the workings? I can't commit myself. An 8 millimeter <laughs> Walt Disney special we're doing next year, I think. There I it is. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing as far as I know. When you look at your opportunity to go and try to fill up the Astrodome, you know, it's a big deal. Well, it, it'll be the type of stuff that I do. It's a mixture of things, you know. It's it's uh, a little rock and a little... Little country western. Is the same thing you do at the National Hotel? Yeah, it's the same type of thing. A lot of different type of songs. So I, I just hope I can put on a good show, man. What happened to the Jordan Airs? I can't get them out of Nashville, man. They they got stuck in Nashville and uh, <laughs> you know they make so much money and they they do they, they do so well in Nashville you you can't get them out of there. You, know? you have any thoughts about the rising interest in country music? I think it's fantastic. You see, country music was always a part of, uh, of the influence on my on my type of music anyway. It's a combination of, of uh, country music and gospel and rhythm and blues all combined is what it really was. As a child, I was influenced by all of that. Okay, I let that go a little longer. I get mesmerized by him, but isn't that cool? So um, be sure and look up that whole video and uh, and watch it through because that was today in 1970 uh, when Elvis was in Texas talking about Sun Records, talking about um, the, the new sound of country music and how much he was enjoying that and, uh, and a little bit more. And now, uh, later on in the video, you get to see Vernon. And they show Vernon really close up, and he looks so much like his dad. It's really, really cool. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. Um, hey, Patty. Hey, Carol. Hey, Randy. Hi, Mario. Glenda. Hello, Andrea. Peter Alden's watching. Share the video, Pete. <laughs> hey, Brenda. All right. So, yeah, I got some more Disney stuff for you tonight, too. Jerry, I hope you're still watching. Um, we're going to save that until a little bit later. Um, next up, I found 10 interesting facts about Elvis Presley, so I wanted to roll through these with you. Uh, number one, Elvis was really good friends with Johnny Cash and the two used to impersonate each other. You've probably seen those videos. Super fun. Um, number two, Elvis really wanted for his birth, what he really wanted for his birthday was a rifle or a bicycle. In competing versions of the story, what Elvis Presley really wanted for his birthday when he was a kid was a rifle or a bicycle. Both fairly typical choices for a boy his age growing up in the outskirts of Tupelo, Mississippi. Elvis's parents could not afford a bicycle that Elvis once wanted, so Gladys talks him into accepting a guitar instead. Elvis's first guitar cost them $12.95 and is purchased at the Tupelo Hardware Company. And uh, Tupelo Hardware, the actual store, looks very much the same as it did in 1946 when 11-year-old Elvis Presley came in with his mom. Gladys wanted to buy her son a birthday present bicycle, but Elvis wanted her to buy him a rifle. 
The well-stocked store sold both, but since neither one was happy with the other's idea of the gift, a compromise was reached. Mom bought Elvis a guitar. This store still has the same wood floors and oak stained glass fronted counters, which now are just as likely to be stocked with Elvis sweatshirts and collectibles as drain cleaner and wrench sets. The store no longer sells bicycles or guns, but in honor of its most famous customer, it still sells guitars. This is, I've never been to Tupelo, and I hope and pray that someday soon I'll be able to go and see all of this fun stuff, and I hope you can too. Number three, having fun with Elvis on stage. Elvis released an entire album of between song stage banter called Having Fun with Elvis on Stage just to fulfill a contractual obligation in 1974. So this is an album of Elvis talking in between songs. Um, it says Presley himself disapproved of the album and it was withdrawn at his request. Despite this, Having Fun with Elvis on Stage reached number 130 on the Billboard 200, peaked at number 9 on the Billboard Hot Country LPs, and spawned bootleg copies along with a fan-made sequel. How funny is that? So an, an album without even Elvis singing on it, it got to number 130 on the Billboard charts. There you go. Number four, Elvis's first TV appearance. Elvis Presley first appeared on national television in the USA on January 28, 1956, the Dorsey Brothers stage show in New York. And on that day, Elvis, Scotty Moore, Bill Black, and DJ Fontana rehearsed in Memphis for their television debut. Elvis and Colonel Parker flew to New York on Wednesday the 25th. They stayed at the Warwick Hotel on 52nd Street. Elvis ate dinner in the Hickory House restaurant that night, and they arrived and did some sightseeing on the 26th. Perhaps an indicator of things to come, Scotty, Bill, and DJ were not afforded a plane trip and drove from Memphis to New York and arrived on January 27th. Uh, Jackie Gleason didn't like Elvis. He said that kid has no right behaving like a sex maniac on a national show. Um, and number five, Elvis Presley and the peanut butter and banana sandwich has been referred to as his absolute favorite. Of course, he was renowned for his food cravings such as um, a loaf of Italian bread filled with a pound of bacon, peanut butter, and grape jelly. Books on Elvis's favorite foods and culinary tastes, as well as other published reports on his taste for peanut butter and banana sandwiches, with or without bacon, have made the sandwich widely associated with Presley. It's often referred to using his name. Um, so yeah, there's some just quick facts about Elvis. I hope y'all enjoyed those. And um, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to... Back to Disney here. This is Celebrations Magazine, and uh, Tim Foster is the editor-in-chief, and um, I interviewed him on my Disney show back in the day, and ever since, he's been sending me a copy of Celebrations in the mail. And why is this important? Well, number one, um, you can get this magazine, too. Just go to Celebrations Magazine, uh, look it up, Google it, get, get yourself. It's a beautiful uh, magazine you can flip through. It comes in the mail. And what I love this month is they have a big story on Lilo and Stitch. Are you guys familiar with Lilo and Stitch? Um, this, of course, is a Disney film, and uh, it utilized a lot of Elvis references and a lot of Elvis music. So I had Pete uh, circle this one little passage for me here. It says, Lilo and Stitch was not conceived as a musical, but music was still a crucial component to the film. Elvis's fans certainly had reason to celebrate with a singer having such a prominent place in the film. The Presley estate had to give permission to use his songs as well as his image. And fortunately, they were both cooperative about Disney um, usage and also very enthusiastic about the film. So yay! Yay for Lilo and Stitch. If you have not seen Lilo and Stitch and you're an Elvis fan, you really, really need to see it. It's good stuff. And then I just want to interrupt really quick and do a little commercial to let you guys know uh, the Beauty Plus talk show with Marielle and Lily is going live on Facebook March 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern over at Facebook.com slash Beautiful in Confident. So it's beautiful, the letter N, confident. Um, you want to tune in and join the conversation as we demonstrate a corrective beauty technique and reveal new details on the future direction of the Beauty Plus talk show. Um, also, I'm going to be Marielle's special guest this week, so I hope you all will tune in. Um, and uh, we're going to do makeup and talk some girl talk, and uh, we will have lots and lots of fun. So I hope you'll watch. Uh, again, this will be on Facebook. So just go to Facebook.com slash beautiful letter in 
confident, all squished together. Um, tune into the show this Thursday, March 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern. And go ahead and give Marielle a like on her page while you're at it. We would appreciate it. I hope lots of friends will tune in on Thursday. Um, would love some support from my Elvis friends on uh, Marielle's new endeavor there. So that'll be fun doing that with her. I'm looking forward to it. And um, last but not least, I wanted to read this beautiful passage from Elvis, American Idol. So many of my friends, so many people got this book for Christmas. I was lucky to be one of them. It says here, from the day Elvis Presley died on August 16th, 1977, the fans refused to let his legacy or his talent be forgotten, despite the rumors that belittled his image and the real-life revelations that shocked the public Elvis fans remain loyal, even in the face of a caustic media that still prefers to paint Elvis fans as fanatics. The result is that new generations have become Elvis fans. Elvis was more than just a popular performer. His long career, many shifts in image and associations with such ideas as rebellion, sex, excess, and tragedy have rendered him an iconic or mythic figure. The Elvis legend is frequently evoked in movies, plays, and the songs of other musicians to convey an idea or make a point. New leadership at RCA has focused on repackaging Elvis' music to emphasize its historical and musical significance. Their efforts have reinforced the idea that the true legacy of Elvis Presley is his music. And you gotta love that. Gotta love that. So at this time, I'm gonna bring on a special guest. This is my little boy, my dog. Gizmo. He's taking a nap. He's on a lot of pain medicine. Um, he's not been doing real well. And um, I want to bring him on. Say hi to you. So hi, you're going to make your television debut. Here he is. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Gizmo. He's our special boy. And we're going to miss him a lot. He's going... He's, we went to the vet today and things aren't so good. So I just want to say good night, everybody. Love from Gizmo. Okay, you guys, take care. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Talk to you soon.